Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about adjusting Plant 3D ISO border to display a custom company border. Now, we're going to be doing this inside of 2016, uh, and we're gonna, as we go through this, we're going to be talking about some of the differences between doing this in 2016 as well as uh, some of the previous versions, 2015 and older. Uh, here I have a new project open, and if I come into the project setup for this, I can stroll down inside of here and I can view my ISO styles. Now inside of this project I've got two additional ISO styles created. I've got a uh, company B and a company D as well as the six ISO styles that come out of the box. Now new for 2016 I'm going to be able to delete the, the ISO styles that come out of the box and not have the project manager recreate them. If we try to do this inside of 2015 or the older versions and we go and delete it on the back end, uh, the project manager is simply just going to recreate those and we're not going to be able to um, remove those from our filtered list. So I'm just going to close this down for now because some of what we want to do is on the back side of this. Now if I right click and I close my project, I'm going to minimize this and this is where I have my project that we will be working in. If I expand this project and I look inside of my isometric folder within this project, here you will see that check ANSI B, check ANSI C, as well as my two company board or company ISO styles that I have already built. Now if I step through here and I hold control, I can, like I mentioned before, in 2016, simply remove these. Now, those folder structures control the ISO style. We're going to open those up in just a moment, but those folders are what control the DWT portion of that, any of the attribute files, as well as the XML files that um, reside inside of these. So removing those in 2016 are also going to remove them from an option in my pull-down list when I go through and I actually start stepping through to create my isometric styles. If I open these up, you can see I've got my ISO configuration XML file, my attribute file, um, the configuration IS, uh, ISF file, as well as this ISO.DWT file that, that contains our border. Now, the border that was created, the border that's in there, is going to be the out-of-the-box border. Um, it's, so we want to make sure that we uh, are being careful and we take a few extra precautionary steps in order to um, effectively create or effectively place your company border inside this ISO.DWT. Uh, a precursor to this, though, is we need to understand some of the requirements that Plant3D is going to have uh, in order to recognize this file as well as your border that we're going to insert in. Now, the template file has to be called ISO.DWT. If I come into Plant3D and I go open, come over into my desktop. Again, I'm going to expand and open up that, that project file that we're working with, isometric, company D size, and I expand ISO.DWT and open it. We're going to see that out of the box um, border that was identified. Now, we're doing this outside of Plant 3D. We're just do using our AutoCAD functionality here. Here, I'm going to select this and I'm going to simply just delete all of the existing geometry that we would find inside here. Now, with this in there, the second um, the second requirement that Plant is going to have, aside from the ISO or the DWT file called ISO.DWT, is our border that we use needs to be called title space block. That's the way it's coded inside the XML files, and that's the way we need to make sure that we are um, saving or naming our borders. Now, we don't have to do that before we insert it. We're actually going to do that afterwards. But in that event, I'm going to go into my purge, and I'm going to expand my title blocks. Now, in 2015 and older, you're not going to see this large list of title blocks. What you are going to see is this one title block block, North Arrow, and U21. What all these options are and why we see them here is because the ISO style that we created was created with the ISO wizard. If you guys remember back, we had all those different variations and all those different options, right? We had four or so B size, four or so C size, D size, and so on. So we have all of those inside of our um, this ISO file. All those border definitions are saved inside of this ISO.DWT file. Uh, initially, you'll be like, well, 
I know I need to remove this title block because I can only have one block with a name title block. Um, but if an ISO style is created with the wizard and I remove all of these, if I hold shift and I purge all of these out, um, for whatever reason, Plant is not going to recognize it when you just have this title block when we go through and replacing it. So if you're doing this in 2015 and older or you just copied it from an existing one inside of 2016, all we're going to do is we're going to remove just title block. So we're going to leave all the rest if there, if available, we're going to leave all the rest in there and simply just remove title block. So I'm going to select purge. Yes, we want to purge this item and close. Now, on my desktop, I have a D size uh, border. So when I start my insert command, or if I come into my uh, insert tab and look at my, I can simply come in and I can insert and go into more options, however we want to access that, I can insert a new drawing. So right here on my desktop, I have company D size. I'm going to insert that. I want it specified at 0, 0. I want the scale to be 1. I do not want it to be exploded. I want it to maintain that block and a 0 rotation. So from here, I'm just going to select OK, cancel, and there we've identified our uh, new D-size border. I'm going to set my limits from the bottom to the top. And then I'm also going to start my rename command. So when I select my rename command, I want to select the new border that we inserted, that was company D size, and I want to rename it to title block. Now this can be done on the back side of it. If you guys went in and redefined that border before we inserted it and so that it was title block when it came in, that's all fine, but we need to make sure that either way, if this file is in here, we need it to be called title block. When I say OK here, just do a little zoom extent and save. So we've got two things. We've got our company border inside of here. We've got uh, it inside of the iso.dwt. Then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the border and I'm going to assign it to my title block layer. Save again and close. So now I'm going to come back into my project manager and I'm going to open up my ISO uh, style project that we've been working with. If I right click and I go back into my project setup through my properties option, uh, when it opens I'm going to expand the isometric DWG settings tree, select title block and display. You'll see a preview of it and I will go into my setup title block. Every once in a while you may see some leftover um, uh, geometry uh, from the other title blocks, but from here we're just going to uh, delete anything that we see because we want to make sure that we're left with just the raw area. Now, now that we have the title block in place, we need to set up uh, and define some of the intelligent components that make up the isometric style. Uh, for instance, our bill of material areas, um, our draw areas and no draw areas as well, our intelligent north arrow. Um, I can also come in here and just like I would normally, right click on a block and go into my block editor. Where here I can model, modify any of the geometry that I needed to. For this instance, I want to specify a predefined area for my uh, bill of materials, for my isometric, or for my uh, cut lengths, uh, for my pipe lengths. I want all of that in a predefined area that you see here. When I close this down, save the changes to my title block block, just like we would in normal AutoCAD, I still have the functionality of modifying the geometry uh, at this point as well. So we don't have to go back to that ISO style in order to make some of these modifications. You'll see as we look up at our ribbon, we've got a few options. We've got our draw area. Next to that, you'll see our no draw area, but all of that is grayed out. It's because the draw area won't be available, or the no draw area won't be available until a draw area is specified. So I'm going to select draw area first, and I'm not going to snap it just directly onto the corner. The reason for that is, if available, it will take up all of the draw area that it has. So 
I'm going to place this area saying, hey, fit as much of this uh, isometric geometry on this sheet in this area as you can. And if available, it will stick that all the way to the edge if this is snapped. So I'm going to come off from the corner just a little bit. And I'm going to come down to the corner and do the same thing, leaving myself a little bit of a gap. So in case it tries to fit as much isometric data in there as possible, I've got a little bit of buffer so I don't have line on line there. One thing you'll see if you're watching our ribbon is that my no draw area is available. Before I place that though, I'm going to place my north arrow. When I select my north arrow, I'm going to tell it that I want it to be in the upper left. I come up here and I place it. And then I'm going to specify my no draw area over my north arrow. That way, no matter what happens, it knows that as it's trying to figure out and running its um, algorithm to fit the isometric data on this sheet, that it's not going to place it over this north, north arrow. If I had a little bump out area for some construction notes or general notes, uh, I could put a no draw area over there as well. I'm not having to try to crop out this draw area to specify. The next option is, is placing our tables. Now I can come in here to my table setup first and I can build my uh, bill of materials, I can build my cut list, my weld list, my spool list, however I want. As I cycle through these, you can see the different options that we see with our different class properties added. So if I come into my add column, I can add a class property from my project into here to be reported on. Say I have weight, say I have um, a specific ID number that I need to tag with each component, I can do that at this level. We're going to leave all the out-of-the-box settings for now and I'm going to select OK. The first thing that we're going to place is going to be our bill of material. When I launch this, we want to make sure that we're reading our command line for these because this is very important. Uh, if we're reading our command line, it's going to say to specify the corner we'll launch that again as I launch that it's going to ask me to specify the, the first corner or add it to an existing area I don't have an existing area so we need to add one first uh, so for this I am going to snap onto the individual corners I'm going to snap to the top corner and then I'm going to snap to the bottom corner and not only did it define my area, but it also, if we scan to the top here, it also placed that bill of material for us there. Now, I can still select this, and I can give my, um, my different columns, different um, gas if I needed to. Now, if I come back in here and I want to add my cut list, uh, I don't need to define a new corner or a new area, but I do want to add it to an existing area. So I can either press A, Enter, or I can simply just left click Add to Existing Area from here. Now I want to make sure that my existing area is highlighted, and then I can simply just left click. Now these tables are going to be intelligent, and they're going to build themselves based off of these fields that we have identified. If I need to add another um, area, if I wanted to add weld, I could simply select weld and it'll put me right back in there. I do not need to pick it from my um, ribbon. And again, I can add it to an existing area again. I can cancel out of that now that I have my bill of materials, my cut piece, my weld list. I could simply double click inside here and make any modifications that I wanted to. Right, just like I would with a normal AutoCAD table. Um, the intelligence part of this is what's linked into this cyan color, right? The description of the part, the nominal diameter, quantity, ID, uh, or any of the fills that I would have added to this border. Now from here, I can simply return to my project setup. I want to make sure that I save these changes to my ISO DWT. And here, you'll see that I've got a predefined border with my uh, new defined isometric style. All there's left to do is simply press apply and OK. Come back into my model and run my new isometric style with my new border. Uh, and if I need to, go back and make modifications to my gaps in my columns uh, to display more information. Uh, I hope this was informative. Uh, thank you for uh, joining and watching this video.